I hate sport utility vehicles. Welcome to Grumble Goat. My name is Matt Labodka, and this is a show about all the small things that drive me insane. Let's grumble. What are we doing with these giant cars? The population is growing, not shrinking, which means there's more and more people, which means there's more and more cars. Because for some reason, we can't stop our addiction to cars in this country. But somehow that addiction has grown to large cars. We can't just have a small car to get around anymore. There's no more Miatas on the street. There's no more Civics on the street. Now it's all these huge sport utility vehicles. But you know what? Americans are not thin people. We're not a fit society. What sports is everybody out there doing with their sport utility vehicles? Because soccer moms only need to carry a kid and a soccer ball. Maybe some cleats. Are you playing polo and you have to fit a team of horses in your car? Why are these cars so big? I know in this country we love our cars. Cars can be convenient. But a lot of people in this country live in cities. And you don't need a car when you live in cities because we have car rental places. You can just take the bus or the subway to get where you have to go. Or, God forbid, we walk or just use a taxi. But no, everybody has to own a car these days. But why do the cars have to be so big? Because when I'm driving down the street, I see that most of these cars are occupied by one person. What does one person need a nine-seat, 18-cup holder vehicle for? They're going to buy a vehicle, and they're like, oh, what should we get? And they're like, oh, well, remember that one time we went camping back in 1997? What if we want to do that again? We should get a vehicle that's large enough to support the two of us and our dog going camping with all of our gear. Why? Just rent an SUV if you want to go camping. Cars spend more than 90% of their life just parked. What do you need a large car for if you're just commuting to work? Because the cars are getting larger and larger and it doesn't make sense because there's more and more traffic because there's less room on the roads. There's already no room for parking on the streets and you want to squeeze your hippopotamus sized car into the lobster fish tank at Red Lobster? People are like, oh, you could get a Prius that has 45 miles to the gallon. But wait a second. The Ford Expedition is up to 17 miles a gallon. We're kind of saving money there. What? Nobody needs that big of a car. Unless you're carrying with you all your furniture all the time because you might want to break your lease at a moment's notice. Oh, you can use a smaller car. I hate that people keep buying SUVs and that's the grumble. Grumble, 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 grumble. What? Grumble, 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 grumble. What's got your goat? For the latter half of the show, we'll bring in my better half, Veronique, for an unpretentious look and a segment we call... What's got your goat? You went downtown today. I did. I went outside today. You went outside into the plague. I did. Yeah. I did. It was very interesting. I was picking up a hurricane lamp. for A the hurricane sh- lamp? Yes. What's that? This is how you light your way during a hurricane? <laughs> no, but I guess maybe that's where it came from. So it has a rope as a wick, and you put the kerosene in the bottom of the lamp, and then you light the rope. Oh, with fire. With fire. Oh, it's not an electrical lamp. No, this is an old-timey hurricane lamp. How did you get downtown today? I took the train. Oh, you took the train? Yeah. No, because those those are basically down. sardine cans of plague, right? I mean, I think they're using that light now. Oh, they're using a light. A uh, hurricane lamp style no, light? No. Is it an ultraviolet light? I'm not sure, but it they're they're cleaning the subway cars. Delightful. Yes. It was very interesting, though, because then we went and had a little bite, and this Asian restaurant made little cubicles. Sure. Well, that, that seems to be the standard these days. Yes, but this was different because it was like a phone booth. That oh, you had a phone booth. Well, we basically were eating in a phone booth that was like two phones. Oh, so to speak combined. to each other, you had to pick up the receiver. <laughs> no, there it was like prisoners between the ever all the other parties. Well, speaking of having to travel places, mm-hmm. we recently went upstate. We did. Yeah, it was we took marvelous. And the subway didn't go there. No, no, no. We didn't take remember, the subway. Do you remember how we got there? Yes, I do. My brother drove down here. Yeah, and drove us back right not too far about four hours each way that's the uh, that's the old-fashioned ride sharing yes yes carpooling they used to call it before uber 
that was what ride sharing was. was yeah. Your brother picked you up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Family. And I, now, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. you were driving and you hit a little patch of snow. Oh my gosh, I did. And I didn't know what to do, but I did know what to do because I remembered in that situation, you're just supposed to keep it steady. So I could feel the steering wheel want to go a certain way. So <laughs> I turned it the opposite way and realized that I shouldn't have done that because and then, then we immediately swerved, correct. And then I corrected it. Some would call it overcorrecting. Overcorrecting. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So basically what you did is you just threw the steering wheel back and forth and back and forth. Yes, but I didn't accelerate. And that was the key. That was the key. Let us glide. And we were safe and everything was fine, but we did lose traction and sort of meandered around the roadway yes. for a little while. There was suspense in the <laughs> car. I could feel my brother in the back seat saying, yeah. why did I let her drive? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, what I am of, a good what, driver, though. You are a good driver. I think I'm a very good driver. I have fast reflexes. How would you, how would you compare yourself as a driver to me? Well, you are very confident. The thing here that's different is like. If I don't know something, if we're renting a car, you know, I like to know where everything is. So I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. You don't really ask a lot of questions. You just sort of know all these things. Well, maybe it's because I asked all those questions in the past. Or you're just falsely confident. Now, you've known me for quite a while now. And now, just now you're posing that I'm falsely (laughs) confident. Because you just do fine. You do fine when you get in any kind of car. Now, when I get behind All right. So in summary, you're a good driver and I'm just fine. (laughs) No, no, no. Okay, that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, what, what kind of car were we driving? Do you remember? Yes, we were driving a BMW. Oh, a BMW. Fancy. Yes. yes. Yeah. That, now, that was a small little car. It was a two-door. It was a two-door. Yeah, that was fun. It's a fun little sporty car. It was a sporty car. Yep. Do you think anything to do with you hitting the snow, do you blame that on it being a little sporty small car? Yes, because it's not made for snow. It's made oh. for a racetrack. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's a little sporty car. Yeah, it's a little sporty car. It's lower to the ground. I mean, I don't know. Can sporty cars have four-wheel drive? I mean, that's what people always say. Oh, you want four-wheel drive when you're driving in the snow. Oh, do people always say that? Well, they do on the commercials. Uh, so what what kind of vehicle do you think would have prevented the spin-out we had? Maybe a Hummer. B- oh, big old Hummer. Yeah, big car. Oh, oh, a bi- oh right. Big, okay, the big tires. Car. It's the tires. Oh, it's the tires. I think it's the tires. Okay. So you think a Hummer would have been the right vehicle to get through the snow drift? A Hummer or maybe something with tires, with those like super tires. Super tires. I tire. don't know because I feel as if we So hit you want a-, a tractor. You want like a John Deere. Yeah. I want a John Deere, but what I feel is if we hit ice, so it doesn't really matter what tires you had. Oh, once we hit you, ice. Once sure. you hit ice and you slide, that's kind of the end of it. Yeah, well, that's, that's the end. <laughs> right, you just slide until you stop. Do you think you know? we hit ice? Yeah. And we didn't hit ice. No, we did hit ice. No, we didn't. We didn't hit ice? No, you hit a snow drift. What's the difference? The snow drift is snow and ice is ice. ice. Fresh powder? Like, would you say I was hydroplaning? No, that's... Water. Yeah. That's that's, rain. That's liquid water. That's the rain part. Yeah. Well, when we were on your motorcycle... Driving in the rain. Driving in fresh rain, I was terrified. Yeah. Terrified and wet. It was fun. But you'll note I kept it in a straight line. You're a very good driver. Now she says it. (laughs) I knew that's what you wanted. I just didn't want to give it to you right away. (laughs) I had to earn that, huh? Yeah. Um, A lot of people are buying these large cars. I know. It's so unnecessary. Oh, it is? Yes, I think it's unnecessary. Well, do you think they've ever been caught in a snowdrift and they felt the need to get a larger car? No, I think they heard that on the news. Oh, like you said earlier. Yes. Yeah, they heard that the four-wheel drive. Yes. That's the way to do it. Yes. And I also feel like people that get bigger cars, it's just they like to be higher up. Oh, it's a height thing. It's a height thing. Oh, they like to feel taller? Feel taller. Feel the power of the the car. Oh, the power. Oh, it's like having a high seat. Yes. Oh, it's like you have your own throne of swords. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But it's leather. It's not uncomfortable. An Iron Throne, I would think, would be a little uncomfortable. They like to sit on their big, cushiony throne. Yeah, it's like a lazy boy. Instead of watching the boob tube, you are driving your car. That's weird because when I drive one of these large vehicles, I feel like a bus driver. 
even in like your mom's car. She does have a nice car. It's not that big though. That's more on the smaller side. It's a small SUV, which is ridiculous that we have a category for small SUV. I mean, when I was growing up, my dad had Oldsmobiles. I mean, that's like a couch. Like that is a nice velvet couch while you're cruising along. When I lived in Milwaukee, I learned that cruising is an actual after-school activity that high schoolers would do. Oh, yeah. Did you do that in New Jersey? Well, I was never blessed with a car. My brother got a car. No, that's an I didn't get a car. Words. Blessed. Yes. A car is a blessing? It's a privilege to have a car. And my brother received that privilege, and I did not. Okay, and blessings come from... Your parents. Your Usually parents. your deity. Well... No, I mean, I guess God or Okay, so universe. God didn't grace you with a car. You know, talking about Adam and Eve, the fruit was giving us all knowledge. For our listeners, Adam and Eve came up in our warm-up game. We always do a warm-up, and it came up in our warm-up. I've been thinking about this. Adam and Eve. Adam and, and Eve. And how the tree had the knowledge. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, if the universe has provided this knowledge for us, what were we talking about? Do you think the Garden of Eden, do you think, do you think the tree was like door number two no i think, think it was door, door number, number one. one was eternal life and door number two was the tree of knowledge of good and evil and door number three was this new car <laughs> no i don't think that any of that if you were gonna buy a car what kind of car would you get mm, i've thought about this question before for the longest time i wanted a dodge neon when i was in high school oh neon that's a cute car yeah it's a cute little car but then i realized that if you're in an accident it's going to be ruined and totaled in like two seconds. Well, any car is going to be ruined and totaled in two seconds when you get in an accident. That's what accidents are. Well, yes, yes, yes. But I feel like it's not as sturdy. Oh, what's a sturdy car? I want to talk about this really yeah. quickly. You would see a commercial on the television maybe about a year ago, and you were in a tither about Oh, my it. God. The bicycle? You, the bicycle oh car. God. You were like, who are they marketing to? Well, it's like they have this big old pickup truck. They're like, get this big old pickup truck that yeah. has the most torque and the most power to fit your 10-speed road bicycle on the back of. And he was driving up a mountain, and they got off and took his little 10-speed road bike off, and then like was racing in his spandex shorts down right. the mountain. I'm like, who? Who are they advertising to? Who are they advertising to? That person that owns that bike would never buy that pickup truck. And the guy that wants to buy that massive car is no. not putting on spandex and riding a road bike. Yeah, you know who they were marketing to. They were marketing to the dude that his brother-in-law is the bicycle guy. So he's like, oh, when we go on our family reunions. Yeah, it's wild how people will create scenarios in their head. These weird hypotheticals. Oh, you might happen to want to go to Yosemite with the kids. But it brings me back to when we were kids, the station wagons. Now, as a kid, did you ever sit in the back seat of that? I remember one time my Cub Scout troop yeah. came home from Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. The cops followed us home to the scout leader's house and... They got drunk at the Chuck E. Cheese and drove us drunk home. Oh, my God. But the cop was just like, don't do that again. Like, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You got kids in the back there. Yeah. Yeah. When do you think the shift happened from the little small like. When did the shift happen? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to drown into the technicality. I think it was in the 90s. I think it that's was when the shift happened. Yeah. 80s into 90s, big push for seatbelts, for safety. And then I think the cars got bigger because of the safety concern. The car companies were resisting against it. It's a resistance against change. Yeah, but yeah. it led to a safer society. And so I think since they were forced into this safety mentality, the car manufacturers were like, you want safe? I'll give you safe. Oh, and yeah. just went crazy being like, you want safe? Bigger, better, heavier, yeah. side airbag, side impact, front <laughs> airbag. Yes, so safe. Safety, safety, safety. You be the demolition derby in your giant Ford Expedition. Crawl over the competition. Right. Watch these Land Rover ads, and they're always scaling rock walls. Oh, I know. <laughs> Land like, Rover. They're in Arizona somewhere, like on a cliff. As if a landslide is about to happen at any moment in Chicago. Yeah, they're going to the IHOP or yeah. the Applebee's or something. Yeah, they're, no. they're not trying to descend the Grand Canyon and fall. Ford the Colorado. Right, right. What size will a car finally be safe enough? Mm, good question. 
I, I mean, we already have rhinoceros size. Right. Is it elephant size? Or are we talking like Tyrannosaurus Rex size car? I think Why we're not? talking about zebra size. A zebra a size? A zebra size car, I think, is good. What size of a car is zebra? Because I feel like those... A zebra is not as big as a horse, but it's also not... A gazelle. You know, a gazelle is a little too small. That's like a mini car. Wait, I'm talking about actual size of animals. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, you're like. Hey. Oh, I guess that would be a little small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe a pony. A pony size car. That's smaller. No, ponies are big. No, like Clydesdales are big. Oh, that. well, that's what I'm saying. Like those big monster horses. Now you I like, thought they were ponies. You Wait, what? <laughs> I thought the monster horses were ponies. You th <laughs> Ponies are small. I know, I understand that ponies are like a teenager horse, but I what I'm saying is that I thought ponies were like the big ones <laughs> with the hair and all the stuff. Like on the hoofs and the hair and the stuff. That's a Clydesdale. <laughs> I don't know about that. Like the big horse that you got in Zelda. I asked my dad, I said, Dad, Daddy, if we ever won the lottery, would you buy me a horse? The question was, how large of a car will be safe? <laughs> A buffalo. Maybe it's the size of a buffalo. Okay. I Okay. The, okay. Because I feel like a rhino is a little too big. We need oh. something slightly smaller than a rhino. Okay. Yes. A buffalo is slightly smaller than a rhino. Okay. But a buffalo. Is and the buffalo has nice seats. This has been an episode of Grumble Goat. Thanks for listening. I'm Matt Labotka. I'm Veronique Curley. Please subscribe. I hate when people say please subscribe. Grumble, grumble, grumble. There was suspense in the car.